if you're emboldened enough to be able to wear something that looks really good and is a level of I'm that confident here and people look at that and go, oh, I can trust him. I wouldn't have the nerve to dress like I do if I didn't have the skill set that I also do. So it does go hand in hand. You can always be overdressed and underdressed. I have several clients that uh, one in particular I'm thinking of, he would probably not do business with you if you look too sloppy. Your shoes are all nasty. I mean, he would not invest money, you know, if it was like a financial advisor with you because he wants a professional look. He wants you to be on your A game because he is, and it's important to him. Well, people have that made up in their mind. Right. They have it made up what an attorney should look like. Well, they I watch had... TV, and in their mind, it needs to be this certain. Yep. Yes. And I, I have One, two, three, go. There for Hardy RR. Believe it or not. Welcome to the Lawyer Dana Show. The Lawyer Dana Podcast. Wow, we have a lot to talk about. And we're going to do it right after this. Welcome to the Lawyer Dana Podcast. Welcome to the Lawyer Dana Podcast. Today, my guest is Keith Warshawski from Premier Clothiers. And so the first obvious question is, what's the difference between a clothier and a tailor and whatever else there is out there? Well, first, thanks for letting me be on your show today, Dana and Jennifer. Appreciate it. Yes. That's where, way, Thank you for coming. way more formal than we need for our show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, should, I should have dressed down today. No, no, no. It's okay. No, well, <laughs> for, you, for you, for, we should have dressed up more um, because you are always the best dressed person uh, in the room. Ex- Although, I, I give you a run for your money because y- you basically dress me. So I'll tell you the story and for the benefit of the audience. Well, is so that one of your keep, shirts? N- yes and no. This is a shirt that I bought because of Keith, but it's not one. It's not. This is basically an off the rack shirt. Uh, it is one of my very, very few off the rack shirts. This is a Buki shirt, which is about the only brand that I like off the rack. And I did. You got me in wearing Page jeans before Buki, and then you got me that one pair of Buki pants. And ever since then, I'm like, don't I don't need gonna, any other casual pants. Just just the Buki. We're gonna get into the brands. Oh yeah, oh, yeah I brought will. some samples too. Oh, cool. Nice. All right. No, should so, I? So the, back to the history, though. When Summer and I first got married, what was it, like 13, probably 13 and a half almost years ago, like within the first couple of months, she was like, I have a friend of mine that makes suits, and your suits don't look very good on you, uh, or they're not fitting right. I was like, what are you talking about? And I, I had just gone to Kohl's and bought like 30 suits. This is back when you can... Double, triple, quadruple stack the coupons, right? <laughs> so some of these shirts were three ninety seven after all my coupons and everything, after tax, everything. And and there was a couple of them that I was like, huh, should I these are gonna be nine dollars. Should I buy these? But you know what? I'm gonna buy them out. So I found every shirt in what I thought was my size at two or three different coals around me. And just bought them out and, and was able to stack these. So I had like thirty or forty shirts. Um, And it was, you know, just a couple hundred bucks or something, two or three hundred, maybe. I think it was I think it was like two. And I was like, I've just spent a fortune on shirts. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And Summer's like, "Um, I'm going to have Keith come over. So he comes over. He measures me. And we get one shirt, one coat and one suit, basically coat and pair of pants. I didn't even do the because for a while I started getting two pairs of the pants in case I like damaged one. Um, because you were, I was dry cleaning the pants much more than the suits, but, and I, and I bought a pair of shoes, a pair of Allen Edmonds, which was ungodly expensive to me at the time. Mm -hmm. And it just, my mindset was like, this is just, you can't spend this much money on clothes. What are you kidding? And then the suit comes in. So I've got one shirt and you gave me a tie. (laughs) And (laughs) so I put that suit on and it was. Like, you know that moment in Fight Club where Ed Norton realizes he's Tyler Durden where it's, <laughs> and they, they zoom the camera out and, and the world, you know, comes in. It's, you know what that's called? It's called a, a, a reverse dolly shot where the camera's on a dolly and they zoom out and, and you, you zoom in as you pull the camera back. Mm-hmm. And so the person stays in focus, but the rest of the world just like, you know, it's like the world's coming in on you. That's what it was like. Because... At that moment, I realized you felt oh, like a million nothing bucks. had yes, and <laughs> nothing had ever fit me before, ever. Um, well, right. So I'm wearing that shirt like 
every day. That that shirt and that suit. That's all I was wearing, over and over again. And then so one day, I and I had didn't have court every day. So that's when I try and get the shirt to the dry cleaners. You know, because I'm not washing that shirt myself. I'm not messing that shirt up. You know, we're we're doing that professional, right? And there was a day where it wasn't back from the cleaners and I put on one of the Coles shirts and it was, I was just appalled because <laughs> <laughs> it did not fit me right at all in any way. And it was, and then he was hooked. Yeah. And I was hooked. <laughs> and so then I ordered two more suits and what, probably three shirts and, um, I never wore any of those Cole shirts. Well, there's a di- ever. Well, there's a difference. I mean, I will tell you, like, before I married Daniel, I and I was in the restaurant industry. I bought J.C. Penney suits. Okay, that that was my suit that yeah. I had. It was yeah. a J.C. Penney suit. Yeah, Stafford. Yeah, it was a Stafford. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I bought. <laughs> you know, I, St- and, I grew up Penney's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So J.C. Penney's, you know, you know whatever. Yeah. And then like he was like. Let's like go to Banana Republic and get you some suits there. And I remember the first time I put one on. I mean, for some reason, the their suits just tailor to me perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like I don't have to tailor them; they fit me like everything. And I was like, "Wow!" And I felt so different. Oh, I yeah. felt like this confidence in me. So, oh, yeah. it's really important to dress for success. There was a whole another person came out of me in that. Yep. in a different suit like when yep. i went back to work i was like i don't know i just felt felt better yeah. yeah so the last podcast that we did was with kyle mattis okay who was adopted and found his birth parents who because he reached out to them reached out to each other and then wound up getting remarried to each other no way it's a crazy That's story a great right story but i had just come from court and i was decked in one of your suits, like j- I, everything out. And I think it was, I think it was the blue one, mm-hmm. like the, that, like this color blue one, you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had the same uh, red Allen Edmonds shoes on. I don't know if you can see them, but through the camera, here you go. The red Allen Edmonds with the blue uh, rubber bottoms and the blue laces. So part of the, some of this is my style incorporated, but Keith makes it l- look good and get high quality stuff that actually fits me. Um, and, and he goes, so do lawyers have like their own style? Cause I've noticed like lawyers have some kind of their own style. And my answer to that was some do and some don't. Agreed. You, most of the time it's people that are more successful and have been doing it for a while and you understand and you see other people. When I walk into court, I notice everybody who's well dressed immediately because I'm well dressed and I'm also looking at I'm looking for ideas and I'm looking to go am I the best dressed one it's, in here? It's funny you said that because the last two days I've been going I went to all the courthouses <laughs> and I saw all the different. I was telling my husband he's an attorney and I was making a joke. I'm like, yeah, I heard all these negotiations going on. It was so funny and he's like, oh yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. I mean, I hear one attorney go, can I speak to you for a second? And then they're like, Shh. and I was like, oh wow. Oh, this is real stuff that goes on. It but, is. It's very real but stuff. But your point about the way people dress, I saw people dress like really nice, and then I saw some really sloppy looking attorneys. So the sloppy <laughs> attorney, there, there have been memes put out, and people are like, "If your short, if your lawyer's shoes look like this, you're gonna lose." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Hope you brought a toothbrush because you're going to jail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's 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 important, and you've got to give that right image. And I told Kyle, because I was thinking about it, and I was like, well, what what kind of is it? And it, a lot of it is a confidence issue. And if you're if you're emboldened enough to be able to wear something that looks really good, and especially if it's got a color in, or the, like these red shoes that I got on now, um, to wear that to court is a level of I'm that confident here and people look at that and go, Oh, I can trust him, Mm -hmm. which is good. And the other thing is my actions are congruent with that. I would, I wouldn't have the nerve to dress like I do if I didn't have the skill set that I also do. So it does go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it, it's part of it is the, 
the clothes reflect the confidence, but, but some of it is also the confidence reflects the clothes as well. Um, and for a young attorney, uh, a really good investment is to get in a nice custom fitted suit that really fits you and looks good on you. And once you get one, you're basically permanently addicted for life. And then Keith has the measurements, so we yeah. can just duplicate. Exactly. So can you tell us more about your company and yeah. and what you do? So uh, and and let me backtrack to the first question you asked. We, we got or I got sidetracked probably, uh, or made you get sidetracked. Uh, well, that happens a but, lot. Um, <laughs> so the difference the between a difference between a tailor and a professional clothier is uh, a tailor actually does the sewing. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't sew. I could sew a button. That's a that's about it. But um, and then a clothier does everything else but sew. And I actually mark it up. If it doesn't fit right, I know what to do. Um, some people use chalk. Some people use pens. Um, but either way, uh, th- they work. And then I give it to my master tailor, and he does the sewing. Okay. And I actually do something that, that's a little different. I actually take a picture. Um, so I tell my tailor what to do. Yeah, I've noticed and then that. And then I, I get, it's like a second opinion with the picture. Mm-hmm. I say, hey, we need to do this. And um, do you agree? And then he looks at the picture. Sometimes he says, send it to me because I want to use that when I'm doing the, the alteration. It just perfects the, the alteration um, uh, the way we do it. But uh, what do I do? Um, let's answer that. Uh, I go to people's offices and homes, and I fit them for their entire wardrobe, whether it's casual clothes. Yep. You're wearing one of the casual lines the casual uh, that, that I probably – I don't you and wear jeans too or no? Well, these are – I think these are the white page – Oh yeah, so page jeans with one of my lines, and I'll go into different lines that, that I got. Um, and you're wearing a Buki uh, ready-made shirt, which is fantastic. I love that line. Yeah, a great tech, number one tech uh, line. I love it. But um, basically, uh, I just help people with with their wardrobes, whether it's just casual or or like golf shirts and shorts and shoes and belts, socks. I, I carry your entire wardrobe, yep. custom or ready-made, and um, men and women. Um, Primarily men, but I have a lot of women as well. Um, just got some stuff uh, shipped to me from Paige, uh, actually jeans and, and a blazer. Women. And a blazer. that oh, nice. uh, uh, It was one of the Christmas gifts one of my clients gave their employees, and they had a couple women. And nice. they didn't. They, uh, one did custom, and then the other one did some ready-made stuff. So, cool. I mean, I, I kind of cater to everything. So, But uh, I would say probably my clientele is, I'd say 90% men, 10% women. But... Uh, um, yeah, it's fun. I love so, what I do. I've done it 20, almost 23 years now. So how, how, uh, how did you get into it? How did I get into it? Yeah. Well, I had a, your, your back, your army. Yeah. Uh, I, back, I am. back when you were young. Yes. Did you, uh, when did you go in the army? Uh, 91. 91. He's and how, how old were you? I was, I uh, <laughs> well, I guess I was 19. 19. Yeah. I, how long, how long did you serve? Uh, three years. Three years. Yeah. And then you got out of the army. what did you do? Oh, I worked for J.C. Penney's my first. Wait, actually, you know what? No, I take that back. Actually, I waited tables and and bartended uh, at Hofbrau Steaks in okay. Plano. Oh, and no, it's called Hofbrau yeah. Steaks. What years? Um, that was like ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, nine, ninety four, ninety five, probably. I there's so many times where I and Did I you think work there eventually Google point? or artificial in, intelligence is going to be able to deliver this to human beings, but I would love to go back and rewind my life. To see where certain friends of mine and I had crossed paths before we ever knew That's each other. That's too funny. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bet I saw you there at some point because I went to Hofbrau a couple of times in that tip period. Yeah. And But back, back J.C. Penney. So my dad worked Penney's. Uh, he's retired there like 42 years or 43. Wow. I mean, forever. Yeah. All eggs in that basket. And, and um, anyway... So we grew up in a J.C. Penney's house. I was going to say uh, kind of life. So um, you're uh, like the J.C. Penney catalog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we had those two. I remember. I hate to yes. say it, but um, uh, what was my point? Uh, Has Daniel ever had to run to Walmart and buy a suit to go to court? No. There was. I think there was one day where I had to go into either Walmart. I think it was Walmart, not a Target, but but and buy a suit, coat, jacket. To wear in the court because I had nothing. Not you know, that I'm aware of, but it could have been. So you go from 
So J.C. Penney. So J.C. Penney's was my, my my point was is J.C. Penney's you was my first suit? main job. Were like you, no, I I started like uh, what's that uh, uh, Michael J. Fox or whatever. I, I started at the mailroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I started as low as you can go, even though I had a great connection. Um, uh, and I think I did a Christmas time inventory one year at J.C. Penney's, where you like do like after Christmas. Overnight or something, like the, where you do the inventory, yeah. Or something like yeah. that. It was it was good. It was good. And then, I I wanted more money, so I at nighttime, I actually changed into um, a, a, a tie, a shirt and tie, and um, I went and sold insurance for nationwide. Oh, cool. So uh, and then it I didn't know that. It, then it got to a point where nationwide gave me a, a, a an offer of a salary to work full time, and it was just way more money than uh at the time than jc pennies and uh i had to make a decision to leave and i did so so then i sold insurance for several years and then um then i went to then i became into the i got into the uh, uh food and beverage um industry and the food and beverage uh worked in a hotel and you know in my background i was a cook in the army so yep. um, I love F and B food and beverage, and uh, so I ended up um, becoming a, a supervisor uh, right away. I, I I hired on for that. I wanted the management job, but they wouldn't give it to me. Though my manager a month later quit, and I became the assistant manager. <laughs> <laughs> and then the assistant manager ended up quitting later, and then I was the acting manager. It was it's kind of <laughs> comical, <laughs> but um, you can act like the manager. Yeah. You can't be the manager. <laughs> No, so anyway, you can act like the manager. I did that uh, uh, for a little while. It was at Bristol Suites, and they rebranded to the Crown Plaza back at 635 in Coit oh. area. Um, oh. So that's what kind of, kind of worked for the Harvey yeah. uh, Hotel uh, group cool. at the time. And, uh, yeah, did that for a while and then got out of that, went into mortgage banking. And I didn't know you uh, did that either. Yeah. So where, I, I started at First banking? Plus Financial. That was okay. that was a company that went bankrupt. Yeah, uh, it was known for 125 percent uh, loan to value uh, mortgages <laughs> that they gave people, and uh, and before they went bankrupt, did you imagine that? Imagine them going bankrupt yeah. because of that. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> you wouldn't have thought, right? <laughs> and before they before they uh, went bankrupt, the the woman that told me to um, go to uh, mortgage banking was a mortgage banker and. She ended up giving me a call before they went bankrupt and when things were kind of a little bit sketchy, like something was going to go down, um, probably about three months before uh, I get a call and she's like, I'm starting my own mortgage company and I'm doing this and that and I, I want you to be one of our account executives, you know. And mm -hmm. So I, I, I quit, went with her and um, stayed there for several years and then um, at the end of that career... I had a secondary marketing person that helped me bring in loans, right? And I pre-graded pre loans and tried to bring in loans that, that we bought and sold. What, what year was this? Oh, this, oh, that's tough. Um, uh, I'd say 1998 okay. and 99, because 2000 is when I started the clothing industry. Okay. 22, almost 23 years ago. So then what happened? So, so the secondary marketing person didn't do the greatest job bringing in the loans and she would not make much like quarter of a point or something. And it just made me so little money. And I didn't, I didn't like that somebody else was, um, determining my income. Uh -huh. So, uh, I met a, a guy named Peter and he just, uh, uh, we used to play cards together, uh, some friends and, and, uh, he ended up just saying, Hey, I, I want to hire you, uh, come, come and, and, and work for this company because I worked for a company before this, mm -hmm. before being on my own. And uh, so anyway, I, I saw what he did. I was like, this is fun. You know, you get to wear cool clothes and, and uh, you get to, you get to share, get share, to cool clothes. Sh yeah. share stuff with people. And I mean, he just, he didn't really do much. And then boom, he like made a sale and it was like really fun. And the guy needed some clothes and it was some, it was a, it might've been an attorney. I mean, it was just, it, it, these guys needed stuff and yeah. it was just so easy for him to walk out with, with all this stuff that he just sold. And I was like, man, I can do that. I can do it better too. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's always a good thing to do when you're going into yes. the business world. And a year later he quits. If you have that impression and you're committed to it, then 
that's what makes an entrepreneur. And then once again, a year later, he quits. <laughs> and I just stayed there all the way, almost nine, nine years. And then I've been on my, my own ever since. So about what made you want to go into on, on your own? So about 2009. Yeah. About 2009. So um, was I one of like, cause you were premier clothiers when you first made mine and we got married in June of 2009. And I know we were married bef before I became one of your customers. So I must've been pretty early on and while you were on your own. Possibly. Yes. What was your question? You, you just asked you, uh, what made you want to go out on your own? Bad management. That will do it. You know, you, you rise and fall one way or the other with management and uh, yeah. bad management. And uh, I've never looked back. I mean, it's been a, a dream to be on your own because you work hard. You get you get treated. If I if I not do not have a good month, it's my fault. It's it's yeah. truly my fault. I'm not working as hard as I should. Yeah. I'm not making the calls. I'm not I'm not doing the effort that it takes. Yeah. But um, being on your own is so much better. And um, it was great. And then this is a relationship business. So yeah. most I'd say 90 something percent probably followed me. Well, you're, that that's true. And I have, I mean, I get approached all the time by people. Hey, I want to make clothes for you. I want to, mm -hmm. I do this. I do this. I want to show you some stuff. I'm like, I got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And a lot of people there that I, I recommend my guy, which is you, uh, a lot of other people they're like, well, I got a guy. <laughs> people kind of, we, we stick to our, our brands to a large extent, unless we see somebody that's just wow, where'd you get that? And then we go back to our guy and go, hey, I saw this, and <laughs> what do you got? And I, I think there's been a couple of times where you've done that, and I've, that you've always written. on that yeah. sport coat. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, and you got Daniel away from Daniel's guy. Uh, Daniel didn't have as good did, of a he guy. He didn't tell me who, it was he had, a guy? He had a guy. Yeah. Uh, where, where was this guy? He had a, he was going to, uh, what's the companies? Let me think. There's like two it Starts with an H or something. Oh, uh, Hilburn, Jay Hilburn, yeah. uh, was it? No, no, I don't think it was Hilburn. It was the other well, one. It was the. They're over by the gallery. Let's let's not make them all unsubscribe. <laughs> there's there, there's a, there's some competitors, but but yeah. It, uh, yeah. yeah, and and Daniel has ranted and raved about everything he's ever gotten from yeah. you. And he's not a, he's not as easy as a fit because he, he's a oh, big, yeah. big guy. Your husband's a big guy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad he, he's on yeah. my side. He's strong too. Or I'm on his side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you, you you wouldn't you wouldn't know, but we saw him in your Disney pictures, and he's got arms as big as my legs. I know. Yeah, no, his <laughs> arms are pretty big. <laughs> anyway, it's been a it's I been a blessing. I make jokes about that. I'm like, hey, like you work out so much, and like you're busting out of your stuff. So why don't you just tone that down? Just just tap bit, do some cardio. <laughs> he's not gonna. No, I'm like, come on. He likes lifting. He likes no, lifting heavy he, too. He does. He likes lifting very you heavy. You know, he he told me he won't work out here because I don't have enough weight. Oh, and so wow. so then I went and bought uh, a couple of extra fifty kilo plates, which is another two hundred pounds. And so theoretically, I have enough weight for him to come over here and start working out. Wow. Yeah, I swear when he works out, I'm like, oh, our foundation is probably like broke underneath in our bedroom because he like takes these weights and he just drops them bam <laughs> i can hear them from the kitchen yeah bam! he might be cracking the foundation like, maybe wow. not any pipes under that yeah, you know <laughs> you'll be out of the house for you six more what? months i never even thought of that I'm like can't you just sit on down <laughs> then never mind i don't want him to come work out here I mean, he has I don't a even, mat but oh, does it? well like, but i'm like still i but they're loud it's like bam for, <laughs> uh sometimes on deadlifts and things you, you'll drop the weights <laughs> I can just see him dropping those weights. <laughs> give me yeah. some, give me some cell phone video of that. He has Jackson lift them and bring them to his, like set it up for him. Really? And Jackson gets one weight at a time and brings them out. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Our son. Yeah, it's pretty funny. That's great. So, how do you keep up with the latest styles and trends and things like that? Great question. Um, I'd say. Uh, I'd say going to market helps a lot because you get to see what's new. Mm -hmm. um, Dallas market has, uh, during COVID, actually, Dallas market thrived because uh, New York was shut down. And, oh, that makes and, sense. And, uh, and Dallas was so open. Dallas is open. And you know what? 
now Dallas has gotten so much more business because of that, because of that, that more people than ever is coming to Dallas now for our market. So how often is market? Cause it used to, uh, every in six January months in, in summer, right? Yeah. So you, every six okay. months, uh, yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah uh, it was January. And I June. think it's January. End of January, I think is the next market. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think it is. Uh, cause I used to, cause the restaurant I used to run in downtown, uh -huh. we would get a lot of market business. So it was always like January 17th or like the 20 something. I yes. remember it was a good chunk. We got a good amount of business. And I've gone to New York. I've gone to Las Vegas, Magic. I've done I've done all the different markets. But um, I like Dallas because most of my vendors that I use go to Dallas. Mm -hmm. Not all, but most. And and the ones that that don't, it's okay. I still you know have a relationship and talk to them and stuff and see. They get all new stuff every season too, so you get to see what's new. But going to market, you get to see the freshest, newest stuff. You know, and and it's really good do you have a lot of people that are like really into the freshest and newest stuff um yeah i do there's there's only been probably i mean minor style changes that i've made over the past 10 12 years uh, one was i used to have cuffed pants and cuff pants are not yeah, they're, they're kind of right out at, at at this point right uh, well let's kinda, just say let's just say the uh, a lot of the older uh, generation uh -huh. um, still do it, yeah. and they're a creature of habit. They 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 don't want to change, yeah. and so I still do some cuffs for a lot of the pleats and cuffs for the older. But yes, the, I mean more flat front and more um, yeah. no cuffs is what's new and better. And I feel like with men though, men suits mm -hmm. it doesn't really change a whole lot. It's the women that probably go a little more. Am I right? Like men is maybe a little bit of it's, change, it's, but it's not. As women's stuff is is definitely different. Yeah, <laughs> women's stuff changes a lot, and, a lot faster. And for me, men's I, still, stuff still changes. Like and the cuts of the cuts of collars and things. Well, you've got women out there that have like their fall wardrobe, their spring wardrobe, and when fall's over, they dump all those clothes and they get a whole nother fall wardrobe. Really? When I worked at Palomino. Stanley Korshak was right across the way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're talking some of the wealthiest people in Dallas. Oh, no, they had wardrobes. There was one lady, she sense. drove a pink Mercedes, wore the pink patent leather suit. Her and her husband, her husband was a plastic surgeon. They were, like, retired. Uh -huh. But, I mean, I don't know. They had to been, like, 80s. But she was, like, well done. And she came in and she had a whole new wardrobe every every season. And I was just blown away. I was wow. like, she'd go in there and spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars, bam, on clothes. And then and then it's my kind of client. Yeah. And then <laughs> just kidding. So uh <laughs> Premier sit, Clothiers, sit if you're gonna your Premier Clothiers dot com <laughs> if you're gonna change your wardrobe twenty, thirty thousand dollars at four times a year every season. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So That's I brilliant. You know, it's pretty crazy. It's fun business. So do y'all have when you on your clothes do y'all put like a fall twenty two or anything like that? There's on the custom stuff there's actually a date like when you ordered it. Oh that's and cool. And then a description of what it what what the fabric well, is. Well he has a he has a record of every single thing that I've bought. And then I keep he, I keep, keep the records. On that's cool. I hire he, my he brings it on the on the appointments and that way he can see well you've already got this one that you just picked out again. Oh, okay. So <laughs> do you do you want two of those or you want to get something <laughs> a little different? <laughs> So my mother actually helps. Uh, I hire her. I pay her to to do some of the stuff that that that's really difficult time wise for me that I don't have time to do. Okay. Then some awesome. of the tedious stuff like uh, the wardrobe cards that actually have what what shirt you ordered, what suit mm -hmm. you ordered, the fabric. Oh, cool. I let her staple it and and kind of yeah. It's, so it's organized when I yeah. see the client. So yeah, because he's got it to like. There's a little sample of every piece of custom fabric that. I've, that I've gotten. So market, let me ask you a question. So January market, is that for like summer, spring and summer? And then June is for like fall correct. winter? That okay. is correct. Okay. So you're a little ahead of the game. Yes. Knowing what so I'm going to get to see what in January I get to see what's, what's new for spring and summer. Yes. I'm, I'm so it's, it's, it's exciting too. It's yeah. So I want to talk about a, some of the things that some of the differences between a custom suit and something that's off the rack. Um, so, hmm. do you want to talk about those things? Like, yes, the, the custom 
f- first off, the materials, the your things that you do in the pockets, things that you do in the lining, functional buttons. Oh yeah. Can I uh, specific cuts? Your, can yeah. I ask can, your, can you can one of y'all grab that red coat out of there? Actually, that you brought all, that he brought all of those. You want to bring it all? Okay, yeah, cool. bring, yeah. bring it all. Because because there are some things, and these are the little details that you notice to look for, and and then the one is like I don't know if you have, uh, yeah, do you on that one? What's uh, that? Uh, what do you? The little pixie stitches. Pick stitching? Yes, yeah. I actually do. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's it's muted. I, it's the same color. Yeah, because it's that it's that purple. But uh, I've seen yes. where you have different, like a uh, wide or something that uh-huh. stands out. I'll yeah. take all of it. I'm going to show you. You know, another another thing that you got turned me on, that you turned me on to, was Tommy John. Yeah. God, I love t-shirts. Tommy John. Yeah, the t shirts. The pajamas. They the do pa- everything. The t shirts and the pajamas are the ones that I wear. Yeah. And they have that new Moroccan one where it's just the, the kind of like little V here. Yeah. And they got uh, some T's. You know, they got, yeah. they got a little bit of everything. I, t- I met Tom. Uh, Back in, I don't know, when I first started my own company and uh, in New York. And uh, uh, they're huge they, now. They've, they've been a, yeah, they were just kind of starting and, and uh, it's been great. Got great relationship. So a guy I went to high school with is one of their head models. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, he's on all their stuff. Oh. Like, Did you ever date him? No. <laughs> Does Daniel need to go kick his ass? <laughs> but? <laughs> no, no. But no, I you remember the episode it, where there was a there was this this bartender oh, yeah. who hit on her. We were we were out get, getting records or something, and and we stopped. And it wasn't at ready, Fuzzy and tacos. so they were like, "It's going to be a half an hour." So right next door was Fuzzy's Taco. So we and go. He's in. like, "Let's get some salads to go," and he orders them, and then I come in, and then he's like, "I go to the bathroom," and this whole time this guy is like totally hitting on me. Wow! Turns out he's eighteen and just graduated from high school, like her son. Yes. And I was like, he was like, you're a beautiful woman. And I was like, you're my son's age. This is creepy. I was like, well, I'm married. That's exactly what pops out of my mouth. I'm married. And he's like, your husband's a lucky man. And and then then he says, he's like, can I get your number? I'm like, I just told you I was married. He's like, that's okay. I was like. (laughs) Wow. Bold. That's a guy who needs some custom clothes right there, Keith. <laughs> wow. Bold. That's crazy. All right. So show us on. All right. I'll show you all kinds of things. So uh, so this is one of your own personal this jackets? This is one of my own. I brought two yeah. to kind of show you some different stuff. I've seen you wear both of these. and <coughs> they Custom are, linings. They're great. So okay. this is uh, my logo. Yeah. So you can, you can, I, and I got another one. I'm going <laughs> to, excuse me, I'm going to show you on the uh, other jacket that uh, pictures, but this is actually a logo coat. So you can put any logo in there, yeah. and it's it's a lot of fun. Um, that's a that's you can't do that on ready made, you know. Yep. Um, you can put anything you want on the back, but you actually put your your name. Um, I put my client's name in here. I I've put winning. I've put clothes horse. I mean, I've done all kinds of nicknames for people. I mean, over the years, yep. you know, you've done it 22 years. I've done all kinds of things, but um, that's a feature that custom only. This is called a. Um, a Melanie's buttonhole, okay? And it's a special sewn machine or a special thing, machine, basically, that does this. I don't know if it's a sewn machine or what because I've never seen them do the Melanie's, but it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work and, uh, um, as far as, like, the, the stitching and everything and how they do it. And I can do up to three colors here, which is kind of neat. I have two colors here, but um, it's a pretty cool little thing. You have an instant pocket square that whatever your uh, lining is, you can actually do the same um so i have a lot of mine if i forget a pocket square you just pull, pull out the out. pocket that's super it, cool it we have it's like a pocket square we have a ticket pocket <clears throat> which is kind of cool this is uh, a ticket pocket and uh just a nice little look right fun buttons then you can also do um functional buttonholes where you can actually undo all these so um and i actually did one two three four five Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I did five buttons. The standard usually is four, mm-hmm. but I, I, you know, I don't like standards. So I, I try to spice it up a little bit. Um, and then you also have on this one, this is a fun little and, and one of the style things that you do when you do have functional buttons, unbutton one. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, it's a, it's a very subtle little humble brag to, to, and you're, so it's kind of like, <clears throat> so when I'm driving the Corvette, like no other car that that that's out there and i don't know that any other type of cars do this but corvette drivers 
we always wave to each other or flash our brights at each other. We're always saying, hi, I see you. The forerunner people do the exact same thing. Do Daniel they? does the same thing. They do like a <laughs> thumbs up or something at one another. Okay. Not- <laughs> BMWs don't do that. Well, because <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's BMW drivers. <laughs> But do you drive a BMW? I do. No, nice. The okay. Small then I, SUV. I won't. I won't. I won't besmirch them. Oh. Dana, Dana's in here. Dana's. That at, am I? I am cool. in that. Actually, one of the hosts is actually in. Because that was that video shoot that we did for you, right? So on my website, um, premierclothiers dot com. Closer to that mic. Um, on my website, premierclothiers dot com, uh, I have some different uh, film, different uh, videos that we did, that's and uh, so cool. Dana is actually right here. He's right there. I'm is that me? Him. Yeah, that's my uh, back. That's his back <laughs> and his shoulder. My back. I get to see Dana and get to see him on my jacket. I remember that. So I, I brought this that. purposely for you. to. to uh, Jennifer had never and, seen and that. And show, you've, got a, you've, you've also got a name badge inside the coat. Oh, yeah. Right there. So I want you to make Both Daniel sides. a yep. jacket, and you can put all my pictures in there. <laughs> we want this. We want, we want the Lawyer Dana podcast inside of Daniel's jacket <laughs> with Jennifer's we picture. <laughs> we can do that. We do have... We do have uh, we do have Jennifer Hardy Har Har T-shirts that are available, <laughs> and uh, I think t- I think you can still, if you order one today, you can get it by Christmas with rush shipping. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> I have not even seen the shirt. I'm uh, kind of scared. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looks like that. So there's uh, some details though, Dana, um, and then pants. Of course, you could do anything with pants too, and and. Um, um, you know, even in the inside of your, your jacket, I have one client, a uh, good friend of mine, his name's Kevin, and uh, he, uh, he has an iPad um, pocket, so he, he puts his iPad in there, so uh, oh. he loves that, and it's Wait, kind of a little feature. in his pants or in nope, his jacket? in his jacket. Oh. Um, so actually, just, I have it right now. I didn't even oh, know I did this. On the, this is kind of funny, but uh, I actually have it right here, so I'm going to unbutton this, but... You actually can put an iPad. So, have you ever that made super cool big enough for an iPad? A little s- small iPad, yeah. Or if you have a little tiny dog. <laughs> <laughs> have you, little tiny have dog. you ever yeah. made a John Wick tactical awesome. uh, jacket or or clothing? Like a hunter, for, for, hunting jacket for, for, for concealed weapons? No, no. Um, I've made them a little you bit want bigger because <laughs> <laughs> have you made it to, made it covering around them? I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know, like on my left sleeve, you you make it slightly bigger because I wear a watch. Right. I've forgotten it today. <laughs> That's true. But colored buttons. I didn't bring a custom shirt, but yeah, I mean, you got colored buttons. You can do uh, you can do pick pick stitching all over your shirts. You can mm-hmm. you can do you can do initials, correct? Yep. Um, uh, monograms. Um, you can do. Uh, what I else? Like the um, you, you can do trim, like kind of like your Robert Graham stuff. So mm-hmm. I can turn any custom shirt into a uh, Robert Graham looking shirt, you yep. know? Um, so so we're, a lot we're of ba- basically you flip it up. It's different color on the inside. There's so many things different that color I don't cuffs, even do. Everything uh, you could even make the trim your, your whole collar. I mean, you can do some funky stuff that you just don't see out there. Yep. That's available. I, just, I you know, only done that by accident once, but <laughs> <laughs> so do you, so difference between French cuffs and what are they called? American, uh, cuffs with it but uh mitered uh, cuff yeah so what button, kind of what kind button. of cuff styles and because i know the cut so that's, that's a mitered here, this is a mitered cut when it's angled at angle yeah okay um what it, what is in style now so um well i always do the mitered versus just a basic mm-hmm. uh cuff i but, think the mitered but, um, just look better you know your one button two button you can even do three button but um i would say more people probably just stick with the one button Mm-hmm. Some people like it different and do too. Um, you see a lot of guys doing French cuffs. French cuffs are never go out of style, dude. Oh, you got French cuffs on today. I, right? I do. I got French cuffs today. Um, I've been doing since since stuff has been a little bit more relaxed as far as uh, in some um, positions. I haven't been doing as much French cuffs as I used to, but they still get them. So, so every now and then I've been. <laughs> So I like French cuffs. I also like having them not not cuffed. Most of the, and and a lot of times, like I will, the, if I'm putting on a coat, I will usually button it because otherwise it gets jumbled up. But most of the time, and even like since we've been at the table, I've buttoned mine. But most of the time, I like to leave them just unbuttoned. I just like the open. 
So I, I, do, I do that with my, yeah. my casual <laughs> shirts a lot. And that's kind of my, yeah. my thing that I've started, but that's just my style. I, I unbutton that uh, just like and, that. And if I was really casual and if it was slightly warmer in the studio today, <laughs> I would have rolled these up. But, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, and this is actually one of the few, it's, it, I, knowing that you were coming, I, I was like, I should probably dress up. And then I just didn't. So, so well, I, I have a question. Yes. When a when a client's going, you're going to meet a client to dress them. What should they expect, like, for their first meeting with you? What should they expect? Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of I kind of ask a lot of questions too first. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, what? Uh, how how do they dress? Do they dress up in suits? Do they dress up in sport coats? Are they more casual in jeans and just a nice shirt? I mean, how how do they dress? Mm -hmm. And then what they what they want to add or replace in their wardrobe. So I kind of have an idea what to, to what to share. And then I come and I kind of do an evaluation. And um, a lot of times I find out what what do they have in their wardrobe now. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's four basic suits, for example, that every man should have in their wardrobe. And that's a navy solid, a navy uh, a stripe, some type of whether it's a window pane or a stripe. You got a charcoal solid and then a charcoal stripe. So. Um, if you got that, that's your foundation. Mm -hmm. And then maybe a, a, a weddings and funerals and stuff like a black, you know, black suit basic is, is black. good. Basic black. So speaking of weddings and funerals, you do do clothes for you. You dress full wedding parties. Oh, yes. And Definitely. That's, that, and you, that that's uh, something. I mean, I I've seen photos of the weddings that yeah. he's done. And can you tell the difference between a rental tux and a, a customized tux for somebody? Absolutely. If you're spending the money that people spend on weddings and you're spending a, a bunch of money renting a tux, two or three rentals pays yes. for uh, your own tux and you look so much better. You can go to any any formal event and you can see who owns their tux and who's in a rental. Yep. It's so, obvious. So recently, uh, one of my friends got married. Uh, he's, he owns a restaurant in Plano. And he bought all of his groomsmen, which were like, gosh, I want to say. Was this Yao Fuzi? Yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Sorry, wanna, I didn't want to say guessed that. I guessed it. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we're bragging he, on he you. By like, the way, so here, here's a free. If, if, Chris you're, ever in, Sorry. if you're ever in uh, Plano and you want to go to a really good a, a, Asian, I guess, like, but he's got, he, he's got one of the best wine selections in the Metroplex too. Yeah. Yafuzi Yaf is awesome. And yeah. uh, ask, for, ask for Chris and tell him you saw He's awesome. Uh, the recommendation on the Lawyer Dana podcast. But he, he, he bought his groomsmen a, a, a tux, which was awesome. I mean, it's like six, six groomsmen, six or seven groomsmen, and then, and then his father. Um, so it was like seven or eight people in all. And it, 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 was, a, it was a blessing, you know. And, and I think everybody just absolutely loved, I'm pretty sure everybody loved, all their I mean, stuff. you put it on so and you feel like good. a million bucks. Yeah. Yeah. You he really did one, do. He did you one feel for my so husband. much better. He hasn't worn it yet. But he, he hasn't worn the tux yet. No, he hasn't had a place to wear it. To oh, yet. we should have gone to the Collin County. I know. Um, we missed this like the first year. None of us went to the Collin County Christmas party. It just snuck up. I didn't even yeah. realize it was happening. And so we just I actually had fun when he came over and did that because I got to help pick out like the oh yeah the jewelry and stuff. Oh yeah, and, Summer yeah. does that same thing. You were you were watching me measure your husband. <laughs> <laughs> I was intrigued. I mean, I'm like I, I like that kind of stuff. Did you have to charge him more for the extra material on his arms? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's the beauty of being on your own. There's no oversized pricing. <laughs> that's a good question. Oh, so you're not like Roddy Dangerfield <laughs> <Yeah>. at school. <laughs> you can be as short or you can be as tall, and there's no extra yeah. no extra charge. <laughs> so, what did you put in this thing? I mean, it's like whew. peppermint. One drop yeah. of peppermint. I have three One drops drop. in mine. Did you only do one on mine? One drop. This thing is strong. One drop of peppermint essential oil. I don't have any. Tastes like Christmas, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> you probably smell it from here because I can smell oh, yeah. it. <laughs> smell like candy canes. Yes, yeah, candy cane. That's what's in candy canes. Yeah. Candy peppermint candy canes. Like, that's the peppermint. Should I share some yeah. of the casual <clears throat> stuff? Yeah. Do? So, I only brought Buki today, but Buki brand is 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 um is one of the brands I like. It, they're tech fabrics and. Um, they just feel uh, amazing. So feel feel how soft that oh, is. Yeah. This is a tech fabric. Yeah, what what like uh, Dana's wearing today is a tech fabric shirt. Um, 
doesn't really wrinkle. I mean, you can wear it all day, and it's you know, gonna I've look started, fresh. I've actually started wearing these to court. Yeah. Like under as as Good. suit you could do that. shirts, yeah. 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 And so, I mean, I just like these. Shirts and even so much. even on the, the the website, they say uh, even these tees can be worn underneath your coats. I mean, they're they're mm-hmm. dressy enough. Yeah, um, actually, they are. They, well, that shirt right really there, you nice. can wear with a really nice pair of jeans. Oh yeah. yeah well, that's what I'm I doing. Mean, that's what's. Should I should I model? This is one of my favorite sweaters, and it's from Buki also. That's I a like Buki that. sweater. This is this is phenomenal. Oh, yeah, uh, I love this. Oh, Daniel would love this. Oh yeah. It's great. What one. size is that one? This is a large. No, wait. I'm sorry. It's an XL. Too um, big for me. That would is. probably that would probably fit Daniel. No, it would. I think it's yeah. I think you, it's XL. You might be selling that sweatshirt to, to Jennifer right <laughs> it's now. It's one of my one of my favorite. Um, I like one that. of my favorite uh, sweaters, and 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 I just love. I need it. something they like that to, so to take out to the uh, shooting range. So I'm just kind of showing you some different things yeah. that 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 we offer. But I mean, okay. shoes, I socks, golf attire. I do embroidery yeah, work, it's really so it's nice. it's everything. Right. Yeah, you like it. But your entire wardrobe is is um, kind of what what I handle. Well, and there's also so I have a lot of those short sleeve bookies that you one that you brought me in Cancun or more than one. Yes, um, that's what I was. Remember yeah. remember when we were in Cancun and bringing, Daniel was like, oh, I really Cancun. like that. And were those were those bookie shorts that I had on? Those uh, those white shorts were those bookie shorts? Do you remember? I don't remember. Because I, man, I like those shorts. Yeah. I haven't liked a pair of shorts that I've owned. I'd have to see. In years and years, maybe ever. But I really like those uh, Buki shorts. What, um, what brands do you like for women? For women? Mm-hmm. So, Ready Made. Mm-hmm. Um, Page. Page, okay. It's pretty much. Uh, I've never heard of Page. So, so. so I. P-A-I-G-E. I, Page, they do jeans. They do everything. Um they have a, a long list. Buki has some uh, women's stuff, but I, I really, I, I've, I've stayed more on the men's side for, for Buki. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, they also have some stuff too. Yeah. So, so here's some, some questions. Do you dress your wife and your daughter? So my wife, uh, do I dress her? No, she dresses I mean, herself. <laughs> but the, has she, has, <laughs> have you, have you, what, she what has, do you call She it? has some suits and yeah. she has some blouse custom you've blouses made some, that I've you've done made for, stuff for, for my wife. Uh, Vanessa, I have not done anything But doesn't yet. she work at like Neiman Marcus she, or something? Yeah, she does. Yeah, so she's going to probably, she's got to tow the company line. <laughs> <laughs> well, eventually I'll, I'll do something. When, whenever, that's out there. When, uh, when she wants a, a nice suit or blouse or, uh, you know, shirt or something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take so care of are, that are you, her. Are, are you going to get something? From oh, Keith for I don't know. You don't know. I know Daniel wants a suit. <laughs> oh, there you go. No, Daniel's like seriously. I need another suit. Okay. Yeah, he needs so another suit. We need to schedule an appointment. He needs a couple All more right. probably. Before I leave, let's schedule an appointment. Yeah. Can you get that mic's that oh, sorry that stand? Is it, you, Here, you can you can pull it up for you a little bit too. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. That Just way you don't feel like there you're you go. professional. <laughs> 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 we are professional grade. Um, so yeah, I mean it. it it uh, for everything that we do, we 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 handle everything. So men and women, like I said, mostly men, but uh, there's a lot of women stuff. Anything to do with um, golf attire and vests, and there's a there's a company called Sanmar that's here in Irving. They're based out of, and they handle everything for women as well as men for mm-hmm. like just casual stuff. I'm doing some stuff for a winery locally in McKinney, uh for like vests and 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 stuff. For the like winery, brand, branded stuff for them. Yes, branded stuff. Cool. We're gonna do oh, embroidery, cool. and so that's kind cool. of an idea. I mean, um, so that's that's a lot of fun. Then um, there's another winery uh, out in um, uh, Eden Hill Winery. Um, they uh, uh, they use a lot of the stuff that 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 we've done for shirts and and stuff. So that's been really great. Do do a lot of people have that same path coming in where they start out with suits? And then you get them in like one or two casual things, and then over time you do their whole wardrobe. Because I, I would imagine, especially at the as they're younger, or like like what Daniel mm-hmm. did, has Daniel done any casual wear with Keith no. or anything yet? No. And I didn't for a and while I either. I will tell it, you, it was I got a bunch of suits. I hate his jeans. You hate Daniel's jeans? I hate them. You need to try Paige. Well, he, I have a couple of. I still have buys, a couple of pairs of jeans. Well, he he buys Lucky Brand. Okay. I was. I have Lucky Brands. Well. But I don't like the way they fit on him. I feel like they're they don't like, mind don't fit on me either. They're too baggy. In yeah, the they're butt. too baggy. Yeah, in the butt. Like 
it doesn't like my my lucky brand jeans, which used to be my my awesome, my badass, expensive jeans that mm-hmm. I was like, now I'm cool. Now they're good for mowing the lawn or whatever I'm going to be in where they're going to get really dirty, ruined, damaged holes in them. Like I, I will. OK, I think I have. Maybe that's a pair of lucky jeans or something that mm-hmm. I wear to, to the gun club because I'm or like woodworking. They're my dirty pants at this point. I find it for like for myself. I have a hard time finding like good jeans. We need to introduce both of y'all to uh, to Paige. I mean, there's there's a brand at Dillard's called True Blue, and mm-hmm. like I get a couple pair. I have a couple like these are like skinny type jeans. I like those, but other than that, I had the worst time finding. The other thing that I like right. about Keith's clothes are they last. Yeah. I don't think I'm necessarily spending uh, probably a, a little bit more than I was before, but that stuff used to. You say, oh, there's a difference. Never lasted. There's a difference because I would tell you, like, it's same thing with like shoes and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember like work shoes, I was going through a pair like every couple of months because in a restaurant, they'll, the bottoms get bad. Mm -hmm. And then I switched over to buying, um, gosh, what are they called? They're like, they're more, they're way more, but the soles last like six years. Mm-hmm. Like it's a whole different ball game when you're spending more money on something. It's the same thing with well, clothes, you know. I my clothes last a lot longer. Banana mm-hmm. Republic clothes lasted me way longer than anything from J.C. <laughs> Finney's. No mm-hmm. offense to J.C. Finney's, but well, so the and Allen Edmonds shoes, you, you buy those, you you have them for a lifetime. Yeah, and you can get them resold. And so that first pair that I bought from you, I've had those resold three times. Um. And you're supposed to, they say you can only get them done twice. I think they'll do them over and over and over again as, as many times as you need. True. True, true. So the whole point of this podcast is invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. With your clothes. Invest in yourself. Make yourself feel like a million bucks. You're going to have more confidence. You're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to do better in your work. And especially if you're in a professional capacity. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Steve Jobs went out in his jeans, his mom jeans and white t-shirt and that oh, was his black look. Black turtleneck. Or black turtleneck, <laughs> right? And Mark Zuckerberg is in the the, the, the t-shirt and whatever it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um or hoodie but or something. That's not probably the best example. And when you got you already got a billion dollars, like why do you need to care? Well, I think it's also but, your profession. Like mm-hmm. if you're an attorney, you need to look the part. Well, and there's a uniform it's, at court. Yeah. And you, judges expect you to. If you're a paralegal, be, you should look the part. That's true too. People should think of a paralegal and look at them and think, "Oh, are you an attorney?" Like you should that, want you should exactly. want people to mm-hmm. get it wrong. You know, mm-hmm. on what you're what you are. And there are paralegals that make more money than attorneys do. Mm-hmm. So you can, Quite a few. you can always be overdressed and underdressed. And, uh, I have several clients that uh, one in particular I'm thinking of, he, he would probably not do business with you if you look too sloppy, mm-hmm. your shoes mm-hmm. are all nasty. I mean, what he just doesn't want to, yeah. he would not, he would not invest money uh, you know, if it was like a financial advisor with with you, because yeah. he just uh, he 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 wants a professional look. He, he wants you to be on your A game because well, he is, and that's important to him. Well, people have that made up in their mind. Right. They have it made up what an attorney should look like. Well, they I watch had, TV, and in their mind, it needs to be this certain. Yep. And know, I, I had on a pair of I don't know, like it wasn't Floor Shine. I forget what it was. I don't remember the brand, but there was a girl, and. Um, I was firing her for a client on a project. <laughs> the client made me fire her. I was like, okay. And um, she goes, and you're wearing, and she named out the brand of my shoes. Like, Are they Rockports? Rockports. <laughs> she goes, you're wearing Rockports. How good of an attorney could you be? I remember this story because Daniel came home. That? I was like, me and Dana both have to buy expensive shoes now. <laughs> I was like, what? This was like within wow. the first two years that I was ever practicing. Wow. But yeah, she goes, you're, you're wearing rock ports. Now, I was on a construction site. I might have still worn those rock ports or pulled them out, like, rather than wear nice shoes there, maybe. 
but yeah, even then, prob- probably not. Yeah. And now I'm on a... Uh, you remember that video we watched recently? We found a video of... Okay, Alan Edmonds is kind of the... Like, if you take Alan Edmonds as the baseline of excellent shoe, there are some... Because Alan Edmonds are about $400. Mm-hmm. Um, d- just depending, give or take. Um, there are s- shoes out there that are 12 and $1,400 mm-hmm. for these fine leather, English, London-made, handmade, handcrafted, bespoke shoes. And, and we watched the video of, of that uh, with like, okay, you, you put this here and here's the angles that are on the shoe. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's things that unless you know to look, no one would ever know, except there might be something about, well, those look fancy, maybe. Um, maybe almost too fancy on some of them, but um, we're, we're very interesting. I don't know that I see, because I, I obviously like nice stuff, but I don't know that I see me buying a 12 or, or $1,400. Although that one pair of shoes, <laughs> he's like, I'm not wearing the most expensive <laughs> pair of shoes that I've ever gotten. And that, that one pair, and they're also red. They're those suede. What are, what are, which ones are those? Oh, Zelly. The Zelly shoes. That's made out of uh, yeah. goat skin. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yep. Jackson and Zoe watch the show? Zachary watches it. I know Zachary does. Yeah. For Zachary, Zoe, he's no. an adult. Zoe's too busy watching other stuff. She doesn't want to. And then, and then educating me on stuff she knows. And I'm like, how do you know this? <laughs> uh, you need she to get some parental more, control. She knows more than You need just she high should. quality. Wholesome entertainment like the Lawyer Dana show. I know she watches like kids <laughs> stuff, but for some reason she watches adults telling them that I don't know life, and she just knows so much. Yeah. I tell you what she told well, that's my what this podcast. She is told from. my brother-in-law. So my husband, <laughs> we were like at this dinner, and my brother-in-law was like, "So you got a car?" She's like, "No, I don't drive like that." <laughs> and he goes, "Ah, oh, I guess you're stuck. You're you don't have a way to get home." She looks over and she's like. I'll just ride with Zachary. Zachary, my oldest, had his car with him. And uh, my brother-in-law was like, I couldn't stump her. Everything, she had to answer for it. And I was <laughs> laughing. I was laughing. I was like, that's pretty smart that she literally, like, off her head. Ah, I'll just ride with Zachary. This guy's car. <laughs> and probably because she knows no one's actually going to leave her around. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. It's pretty funny. So what's on the on the forefront of of upcoming fashion? Well, I'll tell you the end of January. When okay. I go, when I go see, when I go see. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're 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 you know. What's the big fall the stuff for stuff? women right now? So keep in mind, uh, for women right now, that's it's 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 harder for me to answer that question because I really all yeah, I do you is only do about ten percent. Yeah, and um, I don't. I'm well, not, until, like until casual more, wear for casual wear. Yeah. Not dressy, but casual wear. I don't even know how to answer that either. No. Yeah. Um, because I don't do much. Well, well his I'll tell you wife has a great Tommy sense Tommy John of, is excellent. She, well, his wife has a great sense of style. Like she, oh, yeah, she looks does. very cute. Every well, time I you. see her. So she's beautiful. Thank yeah, you. she is very sweet. And you probably got her cause you're a very well dressed man. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt. <laughs> I'll have to ask her how I got her. I don't know. <laughs> if you're, I mean, he's very. Nice if you're in a crowd too. and you're a very well dressed person, uh, it goes a long way. No, it does. It it affects the lobster brain. You know what the lobster brain is? No. So, uh, this is if you ever watch Jordan Peterson, this is all learned from him. But he talks about lobsters, and he there's he sells merchandise with like lobsters on it, or people do because it became the joke. But that there was a study done where if lobsters fight, you, if you give antidepressants to a, a lobster who loses, they will then fight again. Oh. <laughs> they have a, a similar <laughs> serotonin uh, response. But lobsters in, in the study were that there is a hierarchy of lobsters and um, that... Uh, so if they lose, so, they get so depressed? Yes. <laughs> That's, I'm not kidding. That's funny. And I've never um, heard this. Yeah. So either. yeah. So there's, uh, and and so there's kind of all this that you can learn about human behavior from from lobsters. And there's the term is called the lobster brain. Um. And so if you're if you're talking about social hierarchies or or any kind of hierarchies, mm-hmm. um. 
there is a and and the lesson of it was that the lobster brain is thousands and thousands if not millions of years worth of development in just almost every creature has similar type of things and so um there's something inherently wired in us with that same type of hierarchical Mm. perception and if you want to affect that dress well Mm -hmm. and little subtle things like do your clothes actually fit you and that's Mm -hmm. and are you picking out the right and good style and i'll also tell you this like at the very beginning the things that i thought were good for me to wear keith and summer are going like (laughs) i i I do conspire sometimes (laughs) with your wife (laughs) you probably conspire with a lot of wives um (laughs) well (laughs) usually it's them bringing it up like you need to help my husband with blah 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 you know it's like okay so i'll do my best so for for women who are watching this it's even if it's not even if you don't want anything you want this guy going and dressing your husband and women want that because right and maybe this is not politically correct either, but do you want to be standing next to the guy that's well-dressed or not? Most women don't want to be standing next to the guy that's like, uh, you know, the, the lobster brain, go, it's that moment of embarrassment. Um, you know, it, it, that, that can happen. And especially, um, you get, I think, a, an appropriate level of confidence. If your clothing is not in the way, I, I, I usually don't necessarily think about my clothing when I'm out and, 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 and with people, unless, you know, if I'm wearing the red shoes, sometimes it comes up or people will use it as a talking point, but it is, it's also a way for people that will, it's easier for you to initiate a conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, because when I was at the, I was at a conference recently and I was in that blue suit with the red shoes on red belt, my red glasses on, and it was person after person of like, great suit, man. Oh, that's a beautiful suit. Oh, you look great. That's an awesome suit. And it was a really easy way for, for me to start a conversation with them. Thanks, man. I like those shoes. Boom, you're in. If you've ever read uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, it's, mm-hmm. it's a, a good tactic. And uh, I remember the, an, an instance where I noticed someone doing that tr- and trying to use that technique um, with me on a time where I was not well dressed, and it just made me like really so, so, uh, self conscious about myself because I he complimented my shoes and I was like these, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and I was like I guess so you know okay thanks and and whatever and and it took me a second because it caught me off guard I was like oh he's using that as one of the intros like it's, it's a technique it's a tactic. And it was so it's, it's such an effective tactic that most of the time people don't don't know it. But one of the ways that you can initiate a conversation with almost anyone is just pay them a compliment about something mm-hmm. and not about their looks. It has to be something not inherent with them. It has to be something that is a choice that they made. Because mm-hmm. if you're like, oh, you're so beautiful. Um, I that think your daughter creepy. is the, is the <laughs> is is one of the best of like get away from me. <laughs> That's a nice way that she says it. She would dr- drop some choice words like, like, uh, well, forget it's, off. It's I got the perfect daughter. It's, it's creepy. Yeah. It's if really someone creepy. someone says that but, to you, but if someone says, Oh, I really like your dress. That's yes. super cute. Yes. Then or, it's like, or, Oh, thank you. I love the pattern on your, on your, on your, I don't know. I, I might compliment your it's cross. Sweater. I don't like complimenting jewelry around this area of a woman. Because then they're like, oh, you're creepy. You're looking at, you know what? So a lot of times shoes. I get a lot of compliments on my cross, though. Do you? Yeah. I, I a bet. lot of people. I bet. It's just, it's, it's a, yeah. or, or, or I might like catch your earrings. It's just for me as a man to compliment a woman about something. Yeah. Here. I just try to avoid that. Right. Um, most of the time I'm going to go for their shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of, but it's also, it's genuine. And I start because of that and because of using that technique and incorporating that technique. I now notice people's shoes more because I'm like looking for something that I can, if I want to talk to them, um, uh, it's, it's a good tactic. Otherwise you have to have something necessarily maybe creative about whatever. But if you compliment something about them and, and especially if it's a clothing, the clothing is a choice. So you're Mm -hmm. complimenting a choice that they made 
it's not it's not creepy. It's complimentary. Right. If that makes sense. And that's a very important distinction for any anybody that wa- that's watching this. Daniel uses that tactic a lot. Nice. You yeah. remind me of something when I, when I when I have to go to the grocery store or I have to go Home Depot or something I I actually I I need to dress back up again if I'm too like like casual cuz I'm afraid somebody's going to see me in the uh, <laughs> in the store and it happens all the time and yeah. and I always have to somewhat be on my A game with what I'm wearing even though I'm human and yeah I'll wear some really casual stuff at the house or something but uh, when I'm out I'm like somebody is going to be there or somebody's wife is going to be there and and with her mm-hmm. husband and be like like he says hi, and she's like, "Well, who's that? Oh, that's my clothes guy." You know, and I'm not dressed really well. That's kind of like you need to get a new clothes know? guy. Like, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I always kind of uh, Kathleen. Though he's kind of, you don't have to dress up. Yeah, I gotta get a. I'm gonna see someone. You're a I know. walking billboard. I am. <laughs> for somebody, I'll see somebody I know. For somebody that's dressed nice, it's very easy to compliment that. Like, I really like the pattern of that shirt. I really like the material of that shirt. Or I'll go it's custom, right? Um, and, um, you know, like, like we'll talk about the things suit. that, and that is a really nice. I, suit. And I, I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but it's purple. Like it's it gray is. with the purple mm-hmm. pinstripe. Mm-hmm. I really like it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is charcoal, right? It is a, a is dark, your, yeah. yeah it's dark, char- uh-huh. dark charcoal. This is a, uh, dorm- I thought it was great. This too. is made from, but, uh, but <laughs> I'm rem- <laughs> this is made dorme, the iconic, um, Dorm but I think that's really cool English. how you have the pinstripe to match your shirt and everything. Yeah. Which you can't find that off the rack. You're not going to see that anywhere. It got a, uh, nobody can see, but I even got purple socks. Oh, yeah. So. Um, and you do socks too? Yeah. Well, it's it's dark gray and it matches my, my uh, suit and it has a little purple pa- tie to it. Pocket squares, yeah. ties. I mean, every everything that you can wear. So a little tip, mm-hmm. always uh, match your pant or darker. As far as socks, just a little free oh, tip. Okay. You don't want to do too light. So okay. Like, Interesting. Yeah. I don't think I ever do like a lighter Daniel white socks does. or anything with dark pants. Yeah. Well, Daniel wears navy, but he has some is, socks that are like a lighter blue with polka dots. But so I get what you're saying. Let's see how I'm doing today. Yeah, I mean, that's darker, right? It is. And these are these are actually I think these are Allen Edmonds socks too. <laughs> so I like crazy socks. I like giving tips. So. But I don't yeah. I don't have very many uh, like white pairs of socks. I have some uh, with stormtroopers on them that I bought at Disney World. <laughs> oh gosh! Oh my! <laughs> Here's another. I'm going to give you another tip for yeah. for okay. shirts. So when people are dressing up, uh, my own opinion. Um, I, I don't, I try to tell people not to wear a button down collar that has a little button right here. That's a button down yeah. with a suit because you're taking a casual shirt and you're dressing it up with a suit, you know, dressing it up in a nice dressy. So dressy and then casual, they just don't, mm-hmm. a regular collar is mm-hmm. better. You can do dress down or as, as much as with a suit, but the button downs are okay with a sport coat. So it's more of a casual. So look. this is actually a button down, but the buttons button are hidden under. under there. So a lot of people. I like the button this unders are a really lot. nice. A I lot really do like that. I'm. I, I, like I that. think on now that I have this one, I think I'm gonna probably on, on the next shirts that I have you make for me. I'm gonna probably do that. Yeah, yeah, you don't, but you wouldn't button down the collar with that one, right? Well, it is buttoned down it's a, now. It's called a hidden button. It's under. a hidden button. Uh, see, under. I like button, that way better. It's, it's I don't like under the buttons. Here. Yeah, you don't want the buttons out here. And did y'all y'all had? You know why? Could you see it? Did you know it was a button down? Yes, just because I saw that shirt. Well, I know. Okay. <laughs> but just, I mean, like, I, did you I, see it? I did not. Okay. Yes, I, I did see not. it. <clears throat> now I see it. Now you see it, right? But I did <clears throat> not before. Do you see, see it now? I don't. <laughs> I don't like button down yes. shirts because yeah. in, in the restaurant, you know, that's they are always required button down shirts yeah. for the servers. And mm-hmm. so to me, it's like a cheaper shirt to me. That's my thoughts on a button down. Like that is nice because that looks more high end. But that's just it is more high. That's just in general. Or do, I mean, I, I guess you see almost everything off the rack, but it's a good looking shirt, man. I like it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. It is a nice shirt. I really appreciate you yeah. giving me the shirt. Yeah. And uh, I really appreciate all the other crazy stuff. So if you guys see me on ever dressed up or even not dressed up, basically everything, 
uh, that I wear. And I'll, I'll, no, I take that back because I think I think actually like a lot of the polos and things that I wear are, the, are about the only thing. Because I have what are those polos that I wear? Are they I'm trying to remember? It's not it's not Caraloha. Is it? Um, is it one is that it, I sold? Is it to? Tommy John? Are those Tommy John I polos? I thought it was Caraloha. Is it? Are the are those Caraloha polos? I think so. They're probably Caraloha polos. I think that's probably the only thing I've. I, I wear at all that is not. And you me. have some mm. Lululemon sweatpants mm. or something. Yeah, I have some Lululemon yeah. sweatpants <laughs> that have been lingering around for about ten years. <laughs> trying to, I, I'm trying whatever. to sell him more Buki, so it gets to a point where he has so many Buki that he's going to have to part ways with the Lululemon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do like the Buki stuff better. <clears throat> you know, I installed zippers in the pockets of the Lululemons. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. Because I mean, stuff just falls out of them. Yeah. The tip of the day. <laughs> the, the tip of the day? Higher key. Don't eat the yellow snow. No. <laughs> tip of the day is higher key. The Thank tip of the day is higher Jennifer key. So, uh, Keith, Keith, what's your phone number and website? I know the website is Premier, P-R-E-M-I-E-R, uh-huh. Clothier, C-L-O-T-H-I-E-R-S, Clothiers. Clothiers. Dot com. Dot com. Uh-huh. And you have a phone number? 214-682-9779. So if you want to up your wardrobe, if you need a, a full new wardrobe, you need to update your wardrobe, or you just finally want to have something that is both great style and exemplary fit. Oh, you know what we didn't talk about is is the process where you actually deliver the clothes, make sure they fit, and you know, take Cust- it, take customer it. service. Customer service is the most important thing to me, yep. and and always be honest, and, and integrity is everything too. So, I mean, um, if I mess up or, or the manufacturer messed up, because it, it does happen. Everybody's human, and it's made by humans. So, mm-hmm. and, uh, But integrity and customer service, delivering, making sure everything's perfect. Um, if something's not right and I don't know, I can't fix. But I'd fix everybody's stuff. Yep. And uh, Well, you've taken some of my stuff. You're like, I don't like the way that fits. I'm like, oh, it's, it's, it's fine. You're like, yeah. no. <laughs> and you, 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 Correct. And, and that's the type of thing. Like, I wouldn't have known. Yeah. Um, and, but you always make it right. Yeah, well, that's, yeah a, definitely. that's a great quality. Yeah. Thank you. And now I, I don't even think of I, I don't I don't go shopping for clothes. I I need to get some new clothes. That means Keith has to come over. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not, you know, I I haven't walked into a, a store to go clothes shopping in a decade probably at this point. Uh, I've I think I've walked through a couple of stores. At the mall, going to like, some, you know, going into the Apple Store. I think I think I've walked through. What's the one? Not Neiman Marcus, but um, what's the high end one? Nordstrom. 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 Is it Nordstrom? There's yeah, Nordstrom. Nordstrom. It's right there by Apple Store. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. But I, the stuff that you make is nicer than what Nordstrom. So has. so having appointments with you, Dana, I used to secretly, you know, be able to have a glass of wine with you. Now it's peppermint <laughs> water. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, you can still drink wine. I'm just playing. In fact, if, like you're the you're the only one drinking it. Like, come over, and have some have some wine, and we we still got a like full just cabinet playing. full of uh, full of He'll have rye whiskey and stuff. oils, and you'll have your wine. Yeah. <laughs> Things have changed. But he, he has actually come over, so you may need some new clothes soon. Is my goal because um, Keith now comes over every Saturday, and we work out for. Two, about two hours here in this very room. We've been hitting hard. And we have been hitting hard. We've done it. We did it. We, we're at a month, right? You know, I, you know, I'm out of town this weekend. No, I didn't. So, so you're not no yeah. no workout this so weekend. No, no workout. He's like, dang it. I don't know. Like, you you want to you want to come back and do it today? Um, so I'll tell I'll tell Vanessa because she wanted to. Uh, yeah, my so daughter wanted are, to join. We are oh. out of town for tomorrow. You, you've got okay. you've got the fingerprint. You can get you get in, and you still do the workout if you want. You're welcome to come. Um, but it will be next Saturday. But next Saturday is that Christmas Day? I think I'm over out. and do Christmas Day. I'm, I'm out next. I will be in okay. Cabo. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be oh, so. That's so then nice. we're gonna be back in three weeks. Correct. Okay, we'll hit it hard in three weeks. You might see some of my friends. My I have like three friends going to Cabo this next week. Yeah. 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 We should be going to Cabo. So uh, you know, I will Bill, let I'll let Vanessa know that we can't do it this Saturday. Bill Bill uh, was talking about trying to go to Disney this week. Oh, I see. And I was like, but isn't it, isn't it uh, very crowded? And he's like, yes. And I go, isn't it also more expensive? And he's like, yeah. And he 
talking about the prices. And I'm going, look, I could tolerate the crowds if I had something cheaper um, or if it was something you know, like more expensive and there was no crowd. But I'm not going to do – I'm not going to pay more for more crowd – yeah. When I have the flexibility to just go in January if I want to. Like, January is like the best time to go yeah. too. It's so dead. Yeah. Like second, se- th- third week, fourth week of January. Hmm. That's, that's we a went great time like the second week. Yeah. Like several years ago and it was amazing. Yeah. It was like 10 minute waits. You just walked right up pretty much. Well, the best was, was when Bill and I went early and they were still under all that COVID stuff and they were limiting Oh, admission, but also they weren't able to necessarily go. And you know, when they first opened up after COVID, it was an empty park. It was, and there were very, very few people there. And they were like, we have the whole place to ourselves. Because I know a couple of people that, that went, and they were like, this is heaven. <laughs> it's bet. almost weird. You almost need more people here because you kind of feel like, you know, yeah. is the world ending? Are we in a dream? Yeah. <laughs> what, what is this? <laughs> yeah. It's a little, it's not as, the, part of the energy and magic of Disney is that there are other people around having a great time and you're feeding off that energy yeah. too. It makes you happy. Um, if there's not a lot of people there, it's like, yeah, it's just a little bit strange. Mm-hmm. But if you, but if there's like no weight on the ride, just walk right up, walk right on, ride the ride. That's great. And Bill and I have experienced some days like that. Um, and, and we're cool. We've also experienced days of where did all these people come from? But it's it we I think we spent in twenty twenty in in about a uh, I don't know fifteen month period of time. I think we spent sixty days there. Dang. We were doing productive business meetings, and Bill wanted to do it at Disney. So we're like we have a meeting, and then. We ride rides in between. And like, I'm working there. I'm having, having phone calls. I, how, how many? I mean, I did lots of consults from headphones inside the park or on a bus or things like that. Wow. And it was, it was fine. The only complaint I've gotten about it was I recently did a consult with <laughs> the top down in my Corvette, and the potential client apparently didn't like that. I pulled over and put the top up, but I was having an evening con- consultation with him, which no lawyers usually have. I mean, or it's rare that a lawyer will do that. And so I was like <laughs> doing him a favor, but I happened to have the top down when I, I got the call. It's time for that call. I was like, oh, okay, I'm on the highway. I'd have to pull off. Let me see. And I was on headphones. So it wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to yell at him through speakerphone or whatever. Um, but anyway, I pulled over and put the top up. We get that. So there's some times where, where there's clients that looking for every excuse to not proceed and stay where they are because there's an emotional, the, the psych, the, the subconscious equates familiarity with safety, even if it's not. And so people, their subconscious looks for whatever reason that they can do to blame. And a, a lot of, a lot of times it's, well, I went to see the lawyer, but I don't, I don't, I don't like the lawyer or they're just finding things to talk themselves out of. It's hard to get have an initial consultation that you get a bad review on. <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes you can. But. I think uh, you and I both get all kinds, all kinds of personality, all kinds of people. Oh yeah. I mean, I know in my business. I mean, you get, you get, you have some clients that they want to be, they want every detail from the pick stitching to the to uh, uh, the color of of, of a of thread to whatever, uh, and then you have others that are like. Only show me one book. I, I, I can't make a decision past one book and uh, maybe one one column. <laughs> I mean, it's, and and then, then you have others like um, you do you do your job. You're good at this job. Um, and I just ask, do you want me to be uh, bold or conservative? And then I, I go with it. And so I do everything and I don't have to do anything with them. So you have all different types of clients, you know. All so different types of personalities. Do some of your people, do you, I mean, you've got their measurements already, uh, and uh, do they just call you up and go, hey, send me a couple more of this and this and this? Yes. Do you have people say, hey, I don't know what I want, just figure it out for me? Yes. <laughs> yes. So I get, it runs I get, the gamut, I get, I get a little bit of everything. Um, so if you subscribe to, like, Stitch Fix and all those places, don't do that. Just get 
Yeah. <laughs> What's stitch right. fix? It's a clothing thing. You like go on there and you put what you like or whatever, and then they send you a box. And inside the box is all these different outfits. And oh. if you like it, you keep what you want. If you don't, you send it back. But then it's just kind of, and it's like a monthly thing. Huh. So people will subscribe to these things because they don't know what to wear. Man, out of how much, you've got to have made me a hundred things. Over the uh, years. I've, I've had to at least buy a hundred items from you over the years. It's not enough. I don't know where you're going with this. <laughs> well, there's only one pair of pants that I didn't particularly care for. Okay. One. It was one that I think Summer might have picked. You and, you and Summer did, and I wasn't expecting it. And it reminded me of a pair of pants that I saw in my grandfather's closet. Okay, so you had Back. some mental it was, blockage. Yeah, it, yeah, it was some. It was some kind of. Th- it was. And you didn't like yeah. them, obviously, when you were a kid. Yeah, and I should have. <laughs> and, and but later, later on, they kind of they kind of grew on me. But they were also a pair of fat pants, and I can't wear them anymore. Yeah, I mm. think they're. I mean, I I can put two fists where my waist used to be. Um, That's good. Yeah, he's lost a lot of weight. Yeah, he mm-hmm. has. Great client, because when you lose weight, you need more clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, well, I'm not going back. Oh, I remember. Now. I remember because he got some new. He got something new from you, and like I was like, you need to get some new suits. You're like, these are swallowing you, and he was like, I just got this. I remember that. What What did I just get? It was a suit. It was huh? like over a year ago. It was like a year ago. You had a suit on, and I was well, like, Dana, you so need to get here's some the thing. new ones. The, I just got this. Could be within the past two years, <laughs> you know, and I lost that weight over a year. So I know which one it was. Is that purple or was it the blue, ja- either it was, blue jacket or purple? It was something blue. Yeah, it was yeah. blue. Okay. So it was it that, was yeah. Just, it was I, before yeah. I altered it. It was ginormous It was before you, you altered it. And yeah, it, like I was. But I even think after you altered it, he lost some more weight and then yeah. he wore it. And I was like, it's still too big on you. Yeah. It's starting like. Well, and, and. You lost a, a lot. lot of, so I did a lot of the weight loss w- without exercise, and now I'm exercising. So um, my weight is staying the same, but my body shape is changing. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, and like, you know, even in, like I'm starting to like stretch these these shirts out, and if I keep going, I don't know. Like I might have to get more shirts. Completely <laughs> recut. <laughs> yeah, because this one... Uh, I don't know. It's probably a medium. Yeah. You have to go up to a large. Yeah. But then other things are going to be out of whack and I'm going to be like, all right, I'm going to need you to completely recut this entire shirt. And I'm going to pay more for the, to, to have the shirt custom fitted and tailored than I did to buy the shirt. You yes. travel around the country. I do. So if there's somebody, if, if, there, if there's somebody that really wants to get then up their wardrobe, wherever you are in the country, um, it, th- depending on how much stuff that they want to buy, I mean, there are people that will go out and drop a hundred thousand dollars on a wardrobe, and if they're going to do that, you'll fly to them, and or or and you have people that that probably buy airline tickets and things like that for you to come out and back to them. Yes. And you have some real VIPs. I know one, so so I I know him independently, so I'm not revealing your confidence to him. He can get mad at me for for saying this, but I know you do Ru- Russell Bevan stuff, and. And if Ru- Russell can't get mad at me, especially with what I'm about to say, I think Russell Bevan is the greatest l- living American winemaker, period. Possibly in, in the history of all time. His wines are so freaking amazing They're and delicious. great. And he has all, 100 pointer, 100 pointer, 100 pointer, 100 pointer. And his adversity. <sighs> What's so his good. wines? I, I feel Bevan like- Cellars. Okay. Um, Adversity Sellers, which uh-huh. he he we he did the release of Adversity Sellers, the Texas release at Keith's house, and that was an amazing wine tasting. Yes, and, and it that, was amazing that the Mallinson and the uh, uh, what, what are the other two? The um, uh, I forget the na- na- names of them, but Herba, the Herba. Um, mm. I can't remember. So the other just, they're all delicious. Just that. delicious. I mean. Where does he put them? Put them up to put them up to the first gross in France. Uh-huh. You know, like like yeah. M- Mouton Rothschild. I would put up against Adversity Sellers. Is he a no Texas problem. producer? No, he's California. California, okay. Napa. Napa. And um, yeah, and he, he and Heidi, his wife, do the Adversity mm-hmm. Sellers. That's like their brand. Yeah. But he's he does others, and he consults. He for does a lot Learner of Project. He does uh-huh. Carter. 
he does um, uh, adducts, he does per us, he mm -hmm. does um, chase, he does. Um, I might be forgetting a couple more, but yeah, there's there's many. He's a yeah. he's a consultant, and well, it's uh, hard in California to produce uh, French style wines. Very hard. Well, he, they're he, really he, a lot of California is just jammy, 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 jammy. Hits you in the face, just sugar, sweet. A lot of them are. Yeah. But man. So when you find right. them, I mean, they're they're unique. Oh yeah. Good stuff. I, yeah. So I have to try it. And I I have some of those bottles of, of adversity still. You know, I'm about to maybe sell all that one. Uh, yeah. You need to give us the adversity. <laughs> <laughs> I, if there's any that I would want to just keep just to, to hold on to and choose who gets these gems, yeah. it would be the adversity. Yeah. Even more than the, because we got like, we got a 2009 and 10 and 5 Mouton. Oh, geez. The, uh, yeah, of all, <laughs> of all the years, right? <laughs> we drank the 2000. You could sell that as a vertical and probably yeah. make a crap ton oh, of money. Oh, and those off are the prime years that you want. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think we have, we maybe have a 14 with it too. Um, yeah. It's good stuff. Yep. I've got a lot of that 2009 Ponte Canet. Me, uh, Daniel, and Jennifer are going to have to have a little party over here. <laughs> <laughs> I have some pretty good stuff. And my wife. My, what am I thinking? Cooler. And my wife. And my wife. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're going to bring and my wife. wife. Maybe I'll bring Vanessa, too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe she might kill you if you don't. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Depending you on what we open. You have one night. You can do a wine tasting. With. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one time won't hurt. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm not. Because it's no permanent lifestyle change. Although, I mean, so I'm having issues with chocolate lately because chocolate is technically not off my list, but it's like milk chocolate. I'm supposed to have like 85% or better, or at least yeah, 70 stay away from that milk better. chocolate. I know. I know. It's not good for you. I know. <laughs> the dark, 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 dark. Dark ninety something percent cocoa, whatever cacao mm -hmm. is what you should be. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. That's I know. That's what <laughs> and I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep my. So like eighty five percent is about is okay, but uh, seventy percent tastes a whole lot. <laughs> well, of course, so, so, a whole lot better. So that explains why I like the milk chocolate, and my wife likes the dark chocolate. I don't like the dark chocolate. Yeah. So that it's she probably, doesn't need a lot of sugar. Probably, it's probably a worse for you the milk chocolate oh yeah I, I, oh yeah i had oh, no yeah. idea no. see i'm learning something today well because the milk has dairy mm. whereas like the more dark you get it, it doesn't have all that That's so, so funny well the and milk chocolate typically has a whole lot more sugar in it yes yes figures the dark chocolate what it, makes it dark is it's is the lack too. of the sugar yeah. yeah yeah and you don't want anything like xylitol or any of those artificial th that stuff uh, it starts it's to high in, in antioxidants, so it's really yeah. good for you. But um, yeah. Hmm. So even even that little bit, and that's why I told you, like it's easier to quit drinking altogether mm -hmm. than it is to stop for a period of time or try and limit yourself in any way. See, I don't have any of that problem. I could drink, or I don't have to. I can go months. I I haven't had a drink in probably several months. Like it's just like. Probably since Cancun, almost. Really, like, I can. That's how I am. I can, it, I've never had an issue with it. Like it's never been something that I have to like. When we took Thomas out to dinner, uh, Daniel had a drink. Did you? Did you? No. Have a drink? Yeah, I, didn't I had. Think so. I had. Water. Daniel had a couple martinis that night. Or I had maybe had a. I think I had a glass of iced tea that night. But no, I, I didn't. No, Daniel had like three or four. <laughs> did he? <laughs> yes, dirty martinis. I mean, every now and then I will, but like I don't know, I. Alcohol makes me sleepy, mm. so I don't like that effect. Mm. So it makes me tired. It makes me want to go it, to bed. It inhibits your sleep, though. You oh. don't sleep as well. Oh, not me. I'm, <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. But the weird thing about Cancun, it didn't do that to me, but I think I was on an adrenaline rush, so it didn't have that effect on me. Hmm. Um, cause I was excited and it yep. was fun and stuff, but like 
but if we go out to dinner or something and I had a margarita, I want to go home and go right to bed. I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that was enough for me. And like, I, I'm the type, uh, I, I like, I can't even do the big one. It's gotta be a small one. Cause like a big one, I wouldn't even make it halfway through it. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm done. <laughs> So sometimes Daniel will get one, and then I'll like take a couple of sips. I'm like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> Does he finish it? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's normal. That's, that's natural. Great. Yeah. But having, I'm having trouble with the chocolate chocolate resistance. Mm. It's be, and it's also because our CPA gives us the thing of chocolate every year. Well, and, and then I like to, and then. Y- you, you do one, and then it's just ravenous. You eat really, really clean, so your body... I mean, for the most part. So you got, like, a craving mechanism going on. Yeah. Your body's craving something. Yeah. So it's... It, it's pick, chocolate it, it is the only chocolate. craving that I have. Well, it's picked that. So that's Yeah, become, of, all, of all the things. That's become not. your downfall. Yeah. Um, the way to get rid of it or to limit it is you're going to have to fast from it and, like, not do it for, like, a month. So your body's not wanting it. Yeah. And that's I'm okay right now as we're sitting here, even though that I know that you're there's obviously chocolate thinking about right it. there. <laughs> <laughs> I know there was a tower oh, of Giardelli. <laughs> Godiva. Yeah, Godiva. <laughs> I think I see it. Yeah. I had a guy. Is it wrapped? Yeah. Yes. All right. I'm I had that tower of it. I, so I delivered see the all ta- these. See the one that's wrapped? Uh-huh. See the one next to it? Yeah. I ate the one next to it. Oh. <laughs> so the I one ate, wrapped is still sick. In the last two days, uh-huh. I drove to She delivered Ellis, a pallet. Dallas. Um, I went to Kaufman, Fort Worth, Denton, um, uh, Grayson. Mm-hmm. So all these counties. It's weird how every one of them were a little different, you know? They were, but everybody Tarrant was County so nice ta- about Tarrant, it. Tarrant and I think Denton too. They both make you take your belt off. Yeah, I didn't have. And I on. find, I like, I hate having to take my belt off. No, Fort Worth. I think that's Fort the, Worth made me take my shoes and your off. Shoes. Fort, Fort Worth makes you I take thought, belt and shoes. Yeah, no one else made me take my shoes off. In Fort Worth, yeah. I like walk through, and he goes, "Oh, you gotta take your shoes off." And I go, "It's like TSA. <laughs> like, what the heck? <laughs> this is weird." Crazy. Shoe bomber, shoe knives. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Who knows? So yeah, the Shuna bomber. I will say that I I really liked how I liked the setup of the Tarrant County Courthouse way better than any of the others. It was much easier delivering because they had those hallways and you mm-hmm. go in the hallway and then you go into each court's like court coordinator's office. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is so nice. Because some of the others, you know, they're locked. You're trying to figure it out. You can't figure it out. It's like you're getting people to help you. <laughs> hey, I got a big favor to ask you next year. What? If I'm, if Terry and I are going to be delivering those, I need you to put the two address bigger. Because we delivered half oh, of them before we that. realized that they were labeled. <laughs> well, first off, I wanted the address. I wanted the two way bigger. And I kept printing that like I would increase it <laughs> and then I put it into the template the Avery template to print them and it wouldn't print and it. it would not increase the size I, because I'm not joking I was like man I'm getting old I was sitting there yesterday <laughs> every one of them out like what is that number again <laughs> about halfway we started doing that and about oh yeah she about called me half of the ones that we delivered after that we got correct and about half of them I was going so we didn't realize this is not this is not the one from the four seventieth. This is the four seventy first, and like, and because we passed by and uh, uh, and we had dropped one in f- for the four seventieth, and we were down the hall, and then you have to the way Collin County is is this big U, and mm-hmm. you come in and like in the middle. So you go. We went this way, mm-hmm. and then we were coming back, and we passed one, and we saw Judge Miskell, and she was like. You, you you probably need to tell Judge Barissa <laughs> 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 that we're eating her thing and and uh, but uh, it was like no they were all the same or whatever. Obviously. I don't know. It, 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 it was funny. It, yeah, she called and told me. She said, I I have to apologize. I'm sorry. I didn't realize, and I started laughing. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, all the others were executed correctly. Good. I okay. went to each court. <laughs> That's great. Christmas gifts. Nice. Yes. It, yeah. Yes. It was fun. I like g- giving, you know, 
stuff like that. It's fun. Yeah. Makes you feel good. Yep. It yeah. does. And we got a lot of things going out to clients. You want some chocolate? Would you like some chocolate? <laughs> I can't give you chocolate and then in, in good and then not work out with you for that the next two weeks. It was a trick question on camera. I just laughed. I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, you know, know my wife's going to watch this? Yes, do I want, I want the chocolate. chocolate. I want to eat it, but <laughs> I don't want I do. to have had eaten it. So, because I, you know, trying to lose the weight or whatever. Yeah, I'm not eating the chocolate. Do you know, do you know how much I'm working out now? A lot more than me. I've worked out every day since I see, since I saw you. Last night I came out here and worked out by myself. The night, be the day before, I worked out with Dr. Dan, and we went over to the UFC Fit, which used to be a 24-hour fitness. It's now UFC Fit, and that place is pretty cool. I like the way that it's set up, mm -hmm. and it's it's set up for fighters, and it's got heavy bags and things. I mean, if you just want to work out or whatever, but it's it's got kind of everything, but it's got stuff specifically if you're a fighter or you want to do any kind of martial arts, you can do it and practice there. That's and it's great. Cool. So it's way it's cool. It's set up much better than it was when it was twenty four hour fitness. And it's got all the same machines and all circuit. the stuff that you can do. Yeah, you can do a circuit. Yeah. And um that's kind of what we were I doing. I sometimes make Daniel do circuits with me. It's kind of That's fun. what we do. It's funny. It's that high in, high intensity <laughs> interval training. <laughs> what? I'm like, come what? on. <laughs> I turn a video on. I'm like, let's let's do it. So you make them like, like the circuit videos. Okay. Where you do nice. like, you know, you're like 20, 30 seconds on and then I guess I've done something 10 like that. seconds off. I think the girls. You've done something like that they're, every four, for the past well, four weeks. Oh, I know that's that. that's exactly the workout no, that I'm we're talking, doing. I'm talking. She calls them. it circuit. I call it HIT. Yeah. It's H -I -I -T, H-I-I-T. High intensity interval training. Vanessa yeah. does some something where we have like some coach uh, that, that's doing a, like a, I don't know if it's yoga or it's like uh, stretching or mm -hmm. different exercises and we all just kind of. We did that during COVID a lot. Yeah, I can't do yoga. I tried. I don't know what it was. I love yoga. I, it I, I haven't done it in years, but I love it. I injure myself every single time I do yoga. What kind of yoga are you trying to do? No, I used to do it at the gym, and I would do it a class. Like So I uh -huh. do. I would do like a hit for an hour. Yeah. So my friend, my good friend, she, uh, she was a fitness instructor. So I do her class. It was an hour long. And afterwards, it was like a 30-minute yoga class. So I do that too. So... There was times I stay at the gym for like a couple hours. I hit all these classes, mm -hmm. and uh, the yoga class. Every time I got out of there, I was like, day later, I'm like can't move, and I would tell her, and she was like, "Yeah, it's like a water hose, you know. You're you're exercising and all this stuff, and then all like I crank up, and I couldn't like I couldn't move my neck, and but mm. I think this is my honest opinion. I'm not a very coordinated person. Like I am just not like. No, I'm just not. So I think I just was doing things incorrectly and hurting myself. Maybe, probably. You might have also needed some chiropractic adjustment. No, I, I should see a chiropractor. Yeah. I just don't. You should go to Dr. Dan. He's a nice <laughs> yeah, guy. it's very far. <laughs> where where is he? Huh? Where is he? Uh, He's very far? Straight up. For me. Oh, straight up to Sunnyville. 75 at uh, McDermott. Well, you're in my house. 75 yeah, I'm in your house. Yeah, it's it's. That's a, right. It is a little it, ways. It's a little ways to be doing. I that. forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Jen, she kind of treks up here for this podcast. I'm a little ways too. Yeah. I, I'm not I, too bad. Uh, I did. I I used to go to the joint, which I the joint I, chiropractor. Yeah, I will say, not bad. You know, it's like seventy something dollars for a month. You get it a once in a week. You mm -hmm. go in and they. You can buy a you? cart. You know that on Black Friday is the time to buy their uh, their programs because that's their biggest discount of the year. Yeah. And they sell like. I probably like, should look into yeah. that. Because I was there and the guy was like, you know, like your neck. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> you should have this curve. And I was like, yeah. He's like, you're straight. Uh, that's and then good. he was like, and then one side of my body was lopsided. He's like, you know, you're like this. And I was like, yeah, it makes sense. My mom would like try to do my hair when I was younger and she would always like, and this feels weird. Like she's like, this is straight. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm crooked. <clears throat> so he was like, yeah, you're, you've held your body. So what I think happened is all the years of putting so much weight on one arm, carrying uh -huh. plates, and then the other arm, I constantly was walking like this, huh. crooked, and didn't know it. Interesting. So my body's all. You've been and crooked ever since. And that's why <laughs> I go to Dr. Dan. <laughs> yeah, so he was like, you should really see a chiropractor every week. 
I was like, yeah. And I did it for a while. And then, um, yeah, I quit going. <laughs> Not good. Well, Daniel should too. Daniel needs to. Yeah. This is Dr. Dan, the one at like Discovery, like had like some hole going on in his hip or something. Uh, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Because uh, there's like, he gets these x-rays back and there's this black spot. And he's like, oh, no. And I'm like looking at it. I'm like, do you have like cancer or something? Like, what the heck is that? You know, because and come to find out it's like deterioration going on. Yeah, because he drinks all those That's damn Cokes. Sodas. Yeah. He drinks so many uh, carbonated Coca-Colas. Oh, wow. That it's dissolving the calcium out of his bones in his body. Hmm. I told Has him he now finally quit? He quit and he started them back. Well, he doesn't buy them for the house, but he still goes to QT and gets a few. You've got an x-ray with a hole in one of your bones and you know why and you keep doing it. That's just like... It's called an addiction for a reason. Now you know why. <laughs> we have key man insurance on him, so <laughs> as soon as that kills him, I got a payday coming. Okay. <laughs> Let's not talk like that. <laughs> Edit. What else am I going to do? Because uh, I, like, that's the only place for me to take comfort. Because I sure as rather have him around that much longer. Oh well, yeah. But he's too. killing himself, and I can't stop him. So what else am I going to do besides make jokes about it? Like, I can go over there, slap the Coca Cola out of his hand. Well, I thought. I thought Bill drinks Coca Cola all the time too, yeah. and I wish he would stop. Yeah. I do drink carbonated water, but it's not, it's not the carbonation per se. It's the, you, you know, like you can pour Coca-Cola on a battery I know, and, it it, eats away. And, and it will eat away the, the corrosion. The corrosion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, you think that's something you want to put inside of your body? Heck no. Peppermint well, water. He peppermint water is the way. So actually, this is, so first time this is exactly water. how I wean myself off of sodas is I got, Perrier bottles, because you, you only want to put this in ceramic or glass, not plastic. So I took a drop of that in the glass little Perrier bottles, and I would get the bottle, open it up, put one drop of that, and that was my soda, right? And I was drinking that. And this is also how I, di how I discovered frankincense, too, because I was doing that. I was at my desk, working from my desk, and there's a whole selection of all these different types and flavors of, of essential oil, lemon, orange, lime, um, tangerine, uh, um, grapefruit, all of those are great flavors for putting in water. And I knew that frankincense was supposed to be good for you, possibly anti-carcinogenic and just it's supposed to be good and healthy. So I was putting some drops of frankincense in the water too. And you don't really taste frankincense. You don't necessarily notice it. And if anything, it's kind of tastes like a sort of like a Christmas tree, not like peppermint, but no, it's kind of like woodsy in yeah. a way. And it's really mild, yeah. not noticeable. Like this, you like notice. It. Yeah, it's great. Um, and <laughs> I'm so sure she I can noticed. One drop of this. <laughs> pretty strong. One drop of this feels stronger than 10 drops of, of frankincense. Like, no problem. Like, I can do 10 drops of frankincense right into my mouth. One drop of that. I can do like three drops of that, but I'm very, very used to, to and accustomed to peppermint. And occasionally, I've done so. Like, and if you get peppermint and you, especially if you in, inhale it in your nasal passages, like it can overwhelm you if you have too much peppermint. Like I, I've, I've had an uncomfortable situation having too much peppermint, um, but I was putting it in my water and then I ran out and didn't notice it, but then didn't like, I'd get to the end of the day and go, today wasn't that good of a day. Like it's just almost like something was off like I didn't you know like eh. um, and then I had another b bottle of frankincense and I did that again the second time that I ran out of the frankincense I noticed the difference in the day and I was like what is different why does you know I've like I, you know things have been pretty good lately and uh, like today was just off and you just can't put your finger on it and then I realized well the only thing different about today really is that I didn't have the frankincense Hmm. And so then, the, so then I started realizing, oh, it's the frankincense. And so what frankincense does for me is basically boost your mood. Y yeah, but it's not. It it it, it does mental. It it's doesn't mental allow other things to um, 
put me in a bad mood. It, were, it probably reduces your stress levels. It reduces my stress level tremendously. Yeah. Mm. Whatever it is, I can just handle it, and I don't stress, I don't worry erroneously. Whereas, it's, it's, I just don't feel like myself. Mm-hmm. I feel com- just completely natural, normal, loving life. Everything is, is great. Um, and y- y- the difference is you get to the end of the day and go, oh, that wasn't a bad day. Um, and I like to, I, I, I take like 10 drops of frankincense, ideally first thing in the morning, ideally right before I go to bed. And I, before we do the podcast, um, before I go into court, before I have kind of meetings with, or if there, if, especially I know I'm going to have a difficult client conversation, like I'm going to take some frankincense right, right before that. Um, if we're going out or before I go shooting, uh, like I have it in my locker at the gun club, I have it in my bag. Um, it's just, it, I'm just present, I'm just present in, in, in the moment. And you're not, you don't get, I, I saw another thing about Jordan Peter, uh, that Jordan Peterson mentioned, uh, where he was like, when you think about yourself and the more you're, you're self-conscious and self-analyzing and you start into this kind of negative spiral where to your subconscious, it's almost as if it's a negative experience. Um, and, uh. I, I would say that that's fairly true because mm-hmm. anytime I'm too self-reflective and I, it takes you out of the zone of proximal development, you know, the zone the ex- expression where you're like, Hey man, I was really in the zone. I was present. Uh, y- if you're thinking about yourself, uh, you're out of that zone and then you start doubt and having self-confidence issues or all kinds of problems. Right. Or you just feel off when I have frankincense, none of that occurs in, 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 and especially if I'm annoyed or impatient, I get real impatient when I don't have frankincense. Um, and with that, I mean, I understand why f- the three wise men brought frankincense, gold, and myrrh, although I haven't exactly figured out all the benefits of myrrh. <laughs> I have myrrh. It's I've another never, essential I've, oil. I've never heard of myrrh. So the, what yeah. fra- you what, haven't? Mm-mm. What frankincense is, and I think myrrh is the same. It's the three. Well, it was is, one of the things is, they gave Jesus at yeah. birth. But oh, hmm. and you know, Jesus had gold at birth. I don't think Jesus was ever poor. I think Jesus always had what you know, whatever he needed. Anyway, but I digress. Yeah, God frankincense. God is his father. Huh? Yes, <laughs> God is his father. It's right. like well, God's yes. Take care of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but th- there there was a mission there. there. Do you think he was like, guess what card I have? No, <laughs> like whatever. Um, so <laughs> the ultimate magician. We're like, huh, that looks delicious. Oh, a handful of gold out of nowhere. <laughs> you know, like, hmm. Hey, Dad. Oh, boom, there it is. Um, you know, the miracle of feeding 5,000 with, f- with some fish bones <laughs> um, or five loaves of bread goes a long way. So, where was I? Uh, frankincense, they take knives and scrape the tree, and the tree bleeds the sap. They scrape the sap off, distill it, and it's the oil that comes, the essential oil that comes out of this, the sap of the frankincense tree. That's hmm. what frankincense is. And I've actually got that sap. They, they sell, like, the hardened sap of that, and you can distill it and, and or burn it if you want to. Some people like to burn it. I don't like to burn it. Um, but, yeah, I just... Do it like that. It's also very good for your skin. Really, really good topically for your skin. Um, I don't know that I would want to put it directly. Although, although sometimes, sometimes yeah, you I have do. to mix it with a, if a you have certain a, oil. Yeah, you mix it with a carrier oil, like another oil like that will dilute oil it. Olive oil or something yeah, like that. Uh, summer has it. Summer knows those, whichever those oils are. Yeah. But um, like I've put I've put it on a like 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 if you put it on an age spot or a blemish or whatever, it'll remove it. Mm. And it'll like r- hmm. r- remarkably uh, improve your your complexion and things. Wow! And uh, and taking it orally, um, I don't know. My my complexion seems pretty good most no, of the time. No, you have very good complexion. And I haven't had. I think I've had one zit in five years. It was like recent, I think, too. So I must. I don't know. I remember where it was. I don't know, like here or something. Yeah. I don't know. You're happily married, yes? Absolutely. There's another part of your story, and you don't have to talk about this, and we can cut this if if you want or whatever. But um, uh, and you have a stepdaughter, mm-hmm. who is you consider your daughter. Absolutely. Um, 
but you have a good relationship with her father. We have a good relationship. Uh huh. How, how did how did you manage that? How, and and what are, what do you think the benefits are of that? Because there's a lot of people who think that the other side are the enemies, and I think that's just n- nightmarish and, and remarkably unhealthy. And you're an example because one of my ha- one of my hobbies is, and, and it really it's probably part of my profession, but it's something that I do is talk to people about marriage and about divorce who have been through and in all different aspects of it. And you actually are a true success story of I've married a woman who was divorced. They didn't have a good, healthy marriage, but we are able to have a family and y'all, y'all even take vacations together and have, have a good relationship. So how do you do that? Can, can you tell us either how you do that, how that happened, what the history of that was, or what the benefits of that are and how, how, how that, you know, works out and, well, and I th- I especially think, the benefits to Vanessa. So I, I think in society, just even even my first initial thoughts of of that, you're, you, I think you're 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 kind of taught to dislike or hate or there's tension, major tension, and uh, with the ex, you know, and um, you're just taught that in your head, you know, uh, unfortunately, but. In our situation, it works for us. But um, you know, first off, I want Vanessa happy. So um, having her do making it uh, let me rephrase it make making it easier on her in every aspect um, is less stress for her. She's happy, and and I got I have no beef with with her her father, and and I, I like her father. And he's you know, he's, he can, he's family. He's a part of our family. So, I mean, it's her dad. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if something happened to him, it would hurt my daughter, our daughter, whatever, but it would, it, it's family. So, I mean, you just, you try to make it easy on Vanessa and, um, and that's what we've done and we've decided and that's what we do. And, and, uh, we are just fine all together. We have a good time, uh, lots of laughs and have a great time. I, that's I, awesome. I commend that you for that. That is really awesome. Right? Yeah, no. I mean, it should be that way. It should be that way. I mean, the kids need to come first. Mm-hmm. And if you're fighting and you can't get along, then all you're doing is making, you're hurting them in their future. Because mm-hmm. they're and not, you're hurting they're going to, the they're going to struggle yeah. with relationships themselves. Yep. They're going to struggle with trust. Mm-hmm. And so you don't want that for your kids. You shouldn't want that for your kids. I, I really commend and admire you for your whole family relationship that you yeah, have. Yeah, a lot of a lot. you're very blessed and you're 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 great. You're Thank really you. uh, I'm I'm I consider it a privilege to be your friend because you're a really great guy. Thank you. And you make me just look great. <laughs> 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 so with that, um, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and. Uh, Tell your Watch. friends. Tell your friends. Uh, get yourself a Jennifer Hardy Har Har t- oh T-shirt. Gosh. Her last name's Har. So. <laughs> and uh, share. Uh, give us some comments. Tell us what you like. And uh, call Keith. And we will see you on the next episode. Thanks. Thanks. So. The Lawyer Data Podcast.